I think we're working now. We'll see. Uh, we're going to check a few more things. Let us know if you hear us. All righty. I'll let you check again. Okay. And have any luck. Uh, well, the computer over there says everything's good. <laughs> so I like to agree with the computer, but sometimes it does not like me back. So All let's righty. double check. Oh, oh, always got to have something to keep it entertaining, right? Of course. It can't just be easy. <laughs> What's going on here? Let's try this. Let's try that. Let's try that. And that looks, oh my gosh, that's loud. <laughs> All righty. Woo, we got that's it. That's loud. Ah. Welcome to 2021. <laughs> it's a great start to the year. Yay. Okay, there we go. It's working. Oh my goodness. All right. So, we'll do this let's again. do this again. <clears throat> Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome <laughs> to After Hours here at Linda's Electric Quilters. Yes. We are super excited that you are with us this evening yep. um, back in 2021 here, and we have got a great episode planned out for you today. Yes, we do. Um, uh, Diana and I have been talking about a couple of different things that we're taking into 2021 exactly. with After Hours, mm -hmm. and one of them, which will be tonight's episode, is focusing on pantograph patterns. Um, we have a lot of people that have questions about yeah. pantograph patterns. Mm -hmm. um, they get you know brand new machines, or they inherit machines, or they get a used machine that comes with them. Yeah. And they kind of just leave them in the box. Yeah. Because they're not quite sure how they work or how they're used. Yep. Um, so we thought we'd touch on that and mm -hmm. kind of see what we can, what information we can bring to you, and answer some of your questions if you have them. Yeah. Uh, feel free to leave them in the chat. And that's yeah. my spiel. That's your I, spiel. I have one more part, but I don't know if you have anything. <laughs> No, so basically, like you said, we're going to talk about pantographs tonight. We're going to give you some of our tips and tricks that we have learned over the years with pantographs to make it easy. I'm going to check one thing um, while you're doing that. Sorry, yep. I'm check one thing. And Keep going. to make it fun. So we are excited to be able to do that, and we will get that going. Okay. All righty. Okay. Oh, I was just checking a sound thing. Make sure thing. they can hear us. <laughs> yeah, I was just checking a sound thing. <laughs> Since I had to reboot the computer, I had to make sure we had sounds. Got it. So they can hear us. So okay. Good. Awesome. Go team. All righty. So I think what we'll do is, you know, I got to ask a question. Okay. But oh, did you have one more thing to say? Before you do that, I always have okay. one thing to say. Before you do that, make sure that you subscribe to our oh. channel. So it's going to be right down there at yeah. the bottom right hand corner. After you click on that subscribe button, make sure you click on the little bell that shows up so you can get notified whenever we post new videos or whenever we go live here at After Hours. Uh, it's, it feels like it's been forever since we've been live. Honestly, it really? has. I well, and the week's gone by so fast, too. Yeah. We literally woke up today and we're like, oh, it's Thursday. Whoa. I know. <laughs> Um, we talked about what we were going to yeah, do. Yeah, we already had that all planned, but, but it's I like, But I was in the uh, office, and I looked at the calendar, and the count, and it said Thursday on the top. I'm like, my computer's wrong, Corey. It's Wednesday. He's I like, know. The way, no, it's dark it's outside. <laughs> it's gloomy because it's rainy and cold. Yeah. And, and for us in Texas, cold is like 40 degrees. I know. We have long so sleeves on today. We have today, long sleeves jacket. and jackets. <laughs> um, so it's just like calendars all thrown off for us. Yeah. But anyway, anyway. Okay, go ahead. Fun. What you got? All right. So my question for you, why we're going to start going setting up that back of the pantographs, is what goal or New Year's resolution did you make for yourself? That's a good one. What did one. you make on you? What did you do? Okay, I'll tell you mine while you okay. think. I was like, oh, <laughs> I didn't really think about that one. Okay. So my, one of my goals this year was to do more service. Oh, okay. I want to be able to branch out, maybe take a little bit of time off work. <laughs> okay, maybe just get off at 5 o'clock at least. I'll let and, you have that. Okay, you I can have that. Five. And <laughs> just kind of do more service. Okay. You know, give back to the community, give back to people I love. There you go. All right, what about you? Mine would be budgeting. That's a good one. I don't, I mean, like I know how to make a budget, but I don't know how to make a budget. So <laughs> don't don't read me for filth in the comments, y'all. I know y'all are going to go type in. No, um, I don't know. Just sit, literally sitting down and seeing where my money's going, like with subscriptions, Netflix, Hulu, <laughs> all that good stuff that just slowly disappears. Um, so seeing like where that's going, where I'm spending, how I can decrease the places here, I can do things here. I've yeah. already started. I already started washing my cars at home instead of going to the car wash. I there got rid go. of that subscription. So go team. Good. Yay. Yeah, that's so 20 bucks a month. So there we go. Using your money more wisely. <laughs> exactly. So we're Working good. on that. That's me. Awesome. That's a good one to have. Yep. All right. Oh, I said we were going to go on to the back. So let's jump on to the back. All right. So we're headed back to the machine. Um, we're going to take a look at the patterns. Um, so we're starting out on the back with the pantograph and the pantograph shield. Um, so that's one good thing to start talking about right there is terminology. Um, so the pattern that you see right here underneath the plastic here. So we're going to start off with this being this is a pantograph shield. Um, and so this uh, gets attached to your tabletop, depending on what type of machine you have. We're on a Gamel. 
um, but this gets attached to the tabletop and this lays on top of the panograph pattern to keep it nice and flat. Um, it's clear so your laser light can shine through it. Um, and that's my terminology lesson. That's your terminology Where's your, lesson? What, what's your terminology lesson? So I also wanted to talk about like different size patterns for different throat spaces. Okay. So instead of bringing you back and forth between cameras right now, I'm just bringing the patterns over here. So basically if you have a, say if you have like a, you're using a domestic machine or a smaller machine that's on a table, say it's like a nine inch throat, mm -hmm. you really can only do about a four to five inch pattern. So a lot okay. of people will call me and say I have a nine inch throat and then I'll tell them they can only do about four or five inch pattern. And they go, well, that's so small, but I have a nine inch throat. So I try to explain to them, they only have a certain amount. They, so at the, at the beginning of the qu quilt, you mm -hmm. have a lot of space. Mm -hmm. But as you roll your quilt up into your throat, you're going to lose throat space. Right. So that's why you use smaller patterns. Right, because okay. you don't want to get a pattern that's too large. When you get to the bottom of the quilt, you can't finish it. Correct. Um, and and I've so, seen, we've seen that happen way more often than not. So you definitely want to be prepared for that. Yeah, and so if you have an 18-inch throat, you want to make sure you stay with a 10-inch pattern. So if you have 18-inch, you want to, we're going to show you a 10-inch pattern today. You want to make sure you stay with a 10-inch pattern. If you have a 22-inch throat, you want to do more of a, like a 12-inch pattern. This right here is what they call a double six. So it's considered 13. You could probably squeeze that in, but it'd be a little tight. Um, if you have a, what were you going to say? Well, you were, t you were talking about uh, sizing of throat spaces, which is an amazing topic. But you brought up um, a, a word there that you haven't said yet, which was double. Oh, yeah. So t touch on that for me, please. Double. <laughs> you can touch on okay, it. Okay, I'll touch on it. <laughs> so <laughs> when you see certain patterns that say double in them, so like on this one, I'll lift it up for you. This one is a puzzle, oh, there we go, a puzzle all over, and it says double six. So what that means is this pattern is broken up technically into two rows. They're not connected by any means. It's just two of the same patterns just so you can do more at one time. So if you have a double six inch pattern, you could still do that double six in an 18 inch throat. You would only be doing one row at a time though. Correct. You'd yeah. have to roll it more, but you could still take advantage of this pattern. Exactly. But this pattern doesn't intertwine into the next row, so you still have that ability to get that into a smaller throat space. You're exactly. looking at that six So inch. the idea is that to be able to, you can do your pass. If you look at how big your pass is. Mm -hmm. So a 10 inch or less pattern for an 18 inch throat, a 12 inch or less pattern for a 26, I mean a 22, mm -hmm. and then a 14 or less pattern, which is right over here, for a 26. Now I'm going to show you why you wouldn't go past, you really won't go too much past 14 inch. That's a, it's a lot of pattern. <laughs> yeah, so here's a 14 inch pattern. I have it laid here on the, to, lined up here on the table to keep it straight. But I want you to pay attention to this pickup bar right here. Okay, this is a 14 inch pattern. I have a 26 inch throat on here. So even if I put a 30 inch throat on here, this pickup bar is not moving. So really, I only have about 14 to 15 inches. So you never really want to get a bigger than a 15 inch pattern because you're right. not going to be able, the laser light's not going to be able to go back there. You're not going to be able to see it. Yeah, you won't be able to see it. I mean, you could adjust the laser light to work with it, but it would, you wouldn't be able to see it and be more time than it's worth. Yep. So let me, we'll go over that really quick one more time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So nine inch throat, five, four or five inch pattern. 18 inch throat, less than 10 inch pattern. 22 inch throat, less than 12 inch pattern mm -hmm. and a 26 to a 30 inch throat less than a 14 inch pattern and that okay. means one pass of that size okay i had a question about your your very first a nine inch throat there's some little there are some machines out there i get calls they mm. put they're basically taking their like home sewn machine and mm -hmm. they put them on a table mm, and then I they're see. moving them i see so that and they only have nine inch throats mm, that's why so that's where oh, that comes in the mid arm i like, this. I like can't this. leave them I out uh -huh. so we have plenty of those sizes yeah. okay so now that we've gone over sizes Corey, you want to see if there's any questions we are going to jump into um how to set up a panograph okay okay so Corey, jump in at any moment okay sometimes i kind of tongue you're twist fine. you're fine so if you'll notice up there on the camera i have i'm going to pull the needle up here and i'm going to take my so my needle is my laser light let me start off with that. So wherever my needle is going, that's where my laser light is going. So I'm going to come back to the back, and you'll see my laser light right here. So if I was to start stitching at this moment, it would actually start stitching right there. Mm -hmm. So 
I want to line this pattern up, right? Right. I want to make sure it's going to fit inside of the top of the quilt. So to do that, I'm going to first put my tape down. So I'm going to stay in the back. Okay. My laser light is positioned where I want to be able to see it. So if I'm on my back handlebars right here, I can visually see that. Okay. Now you can adjust your laser light if you prefer for it to be down lower, to go in between your arms. If you want it to go higher, you can make that adjustment. Ours has thumb, um, thumb screws. Your machine might have something different, but you mm -hmm. still should be able to adjust it. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to take this tape and I'm going to put it on the outside of that light. And that's going to look kind of weird, but I'm making my border is what I'm trying to do. So you're kind of finding the edge of your quilt. Edge of my quilt, yeah. I see. Thank you. I see. Um, and I'm using painter's tape because it comes off the plastic really easy and it doesn't leave a huge res residue. Uh -huh. So now I'm being back up the front. And I st stitched in, sorry. <laughs> Fine. There we go. And I'm going to the other edge of my quilt. Can you see okay with the camera? I'm not going to mind. You're doing fun. And I'm going to find that corner, so back at the front. And especially if I'm on a bigger quilt, I can use the needle positioner or I can use the flywheel, push it down. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to let you pull that back. And we're going to put it on the opposite side, opposite side of that light. Okay. Okay, straight go that way. Oh, well, teamwork makes the dream work over here. Just so we have a camera. Ah. <laughs> That's good go. enough. Okay. Okay. So now that I'm at, I'm at the back here, you can see where I've laid this up. So we're going to stay here at the back. Okay. And i got to pull my, <laughs> pull your needle up all the way. <laughs> so I'll stay here at the back. And so what I've done here at the back is if I basically have made the size of my quilt. Right. So I have my edge of my quilt here, my edge of my quilt here. And that tells me that I can only quilt within this space or I'm going to run off the side. Right, right. Okay. Did I confuse you along the way? No, I'm following. Okay. I think one thing to bring up real quick, mm -hmm. um, if we go back to front camera on the quilt top here, was this quilt is basted on around oh, yeah. the edges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one thing with pantograph quilting you really want to watch out for is we gave you an example here so you could see what we mean. But this quilt, sometimes if we're doing certain things from the front, we do about a quarter inch base to take an account for binding. When we're doing on, when we're on the back of the quilt, we're doing pantograph quilting. Sometimes we get right up to this edge and that's where that tape comes into effect. So you want to baste, we did this here, like I said, to give you an example, because if you come off and come back over and you're on the back, that might flip over like that and you stitch that down. Not a huge deal, because one, it might be in the binding, or two, you can clip out those stitches, but you want to baste right along that fabric side, right along that side to keep it, if you have to go off and back on, it keeps it from flipping over. And that's one less thing to worry about, because when you're on the back of that quilting machine, you want to be flying through it. Yeah. You want to be flying through it. All righty. You playing with my light? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so now what I'm going to do, we're back on the back, and um, Corey's going to thread the machine for me so I can actually oh. stitch in a minute. <laughs> okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to call the pantograph shuffle. So I want to try to get as much of the pattern as I can in between my sizes. So then this is when you can actually sh um, move the pattern back and forth. Got lots of stuff on this plastic right now. Oh, yeah, a little bit of weight. <laughs> but move the pattern back and forth just, just to get where exactly do I want. Like, where... Do I want this complete star in? Is I'm okay with this half star? Or do I want to keep that half star in and cut off that star? And I think for me, I actually want to kind of cut that star off a little bit because I'd rather have this complete star. So now what I would do is I would take my little pin and I'm going to find my starting point where it comes in. Okay. Well, up here is where it actually comes into the, I don't know if you want to zoom in closer. Oh, can see. yeah, sorry. Um, up here is where it's going to come in to the actual quilting, so I can keep going. So it's all about tracing kind of with your finger too. So I'm going to put me a little mark here and I'm going to put start. That means every time I start this pattern, this is where I'm going to start at. Uh -huh. Now that doesn't mean on this quilt. Uh -huh. Now if I was using a bigger quilt, maybe I ended up starting down here. But for this one, I'm going to start right here. Right. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to kind of go up, go around. And I like the finger trace. Mm -hmm. to kind of get the movement groove in. So I know I'll come out of here 
And what's nice about having the plastic is that if you want to put an extra piece of tape somewhere to make your little note, like for instance, right here, I want to say go this direction. Because when we're back here and we start quilting, sometimes we forget which direction we were going. Right. So you can put tape anywhere you want to make those notes. So I'm going to finger trace that. Then I'm going to come back to the machine. And I actually want to do it with the machine too. So I can get a feel of the movement. And then I got to train myself to look ahead and not try to stay right on it. And you'll see yeah. what I'm saying as I'm stitching. Yeah, that's one of the one of the biggest misconceptions about pantograph quilting is a lot of people think you with that laser light you want to stay dead on to that line. And that is true to an extent. Um, you definitely want to get that natural flow moving. If you try to stay right on that line, you'll be really rigid and very uptight, and it's not going to end up looking the way that you want it to look. Um, yep. So you want to kind of just move and groove with that line. Now, you don't want to go like way off the line up into the middle of nowhere, because um, yeah. then it's going to mess up your spacing. But yeah. you definitely just want to move with the groove of it. Exactly. And I always tell my students, you want to go ahead and tr uh, practice one first with the machine, and the finger first, then do the laser light practice, then actually start stitching. It just gives you that good feel, that good movement before you do that pattern. Right. And you don't have to do it every single time. It's just kind of when you get started and you're learning mm -hmm. how to move the machine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that I've got my start, I need to go over here and find my end so I know where to stop. Okay. okay? So I know that I'm going to be coming up here, in that way, out, and I'm going to come here. And because I don't want to leave this space empty, I'm going to come. I'm just going to go around like that, come back in, go back out, finish that, come back here, and hit end. So it's allow I can adapt whatever I want. That's what's fun about this is I can change pattern designs. Right. However I want to change them. So this way, I come there and uh -huh. I can stop there. I mean, I could loop it around, but then I might catch something on that side. Right. Depending on if I don't have enough backing or something. Yeah. And then you could also even draw yourself a line if you wanted to go up further and finish out this star. If this half, yeah. you can just go up that way and finish out that and end up there. It's completely yeah. personal preference. That's the fun thing about pantograph quilting. Yeah. You could definitely go up there and do that too. Mm -hmm. So let's actually, we'll go. Yeah, do that after the end here. Just step so back up. straight up, yep. And head that way. And, and that, then, then that we'll way. call it my second end. Second end. There you go. <laughs> that works. So anyway, so that hopefully that gives you an idea of how to line it out, how to shuffle it, how to know that you can put some tape down, make some changes, and that tape's going to come right back up. So now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make sure my laser light's still in the right position. And how I do that is, number one, I'm going to look up here by the needle, make sure I'm not sitting back behind the thing. And then I'm going to come back here to the laser light and just go like this, just to make sure that I'm staying beneath the pattern. And then if I'm back at the top... Will you do that bottom thing one more time? You're, you're underneath the pattern. So I'm going to make sure that I'm staying underneath the pattern, like that. So that right there would be more or less the top of your quilt. Correct. Okay. Yeah, so the top of the quilt at this point. until. But it's always good to double check as I go. For sure, yeah. So that way I'm not stitching over a pattern. Right, yeah, I just didn't have you zoomed in, so I just wanted to Got it. hit you over that one Got more it. time. I think so. Okay, now I can go up here and I can start. So I'm going to go to my start and I'm going to pull up my thread. So I don't have to go back to the front. I can actually pull this thread. It's okay if I use a little extra thread. I'm going to go here and hopefully my needle positioner is on. I didn't check. No. A or B? Uh, a. And then I'm going to pull up my thread. Come back here. Pull it all up. A little bit of thread there, Dave. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to needle position it to kind of stabilize it in place, make sure I'm on my starting point in the back now. And now I'm going to the back, and we're just going to go. I'm going to do a couple repeats to kind of show you how it works. And remember how we said you can just look ahead. And on a star, I like to go point, point, point. Point. And it's okay to say that out loud. Your family might think you're crazy, but you know what? If you get that straight point, it's good. And, and if you need to stop for a second to reposition, it's okay. That's what's nice about the stitch regulators. Point, point, point. 
We just had a really good suggestion in the comments while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. um, someone said that they use a dry erase marker on their pattern shield. Oh, um, yeah. so, so just an easy wipe off with some batting. Um, so that works there. Be sure you're using a dry erase marker, not a permanent marker. Um, so that doesn't stick to it. But yeah, a dry erase would be really nice um, as well um, as an alternative as well. She is in the groove. Thinking hard about this one, y'all. If y'all could see the concentration on her face <laughs> right now. Well, and it's, I want to make sure they know that I'm not holding the machine tight at all. No, you don't want to like wanna white that. knuckle it or anything like that. You don't want to super grip it because um, then you're just going to end up driving yourself crazy. And when you get really comfortable with pantograph quilting, I'm going to see if I can give you an idea, but Diana is just with her right hand holding the back of the machine. Left hand is on the table to stabilize her body as she's moving it. Uh, um, but that'll give you plenty of working power on that machine to move it around. It's just, and it's easier to see the light and to look ahead too by doing this. Once you get comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is another thing um, that we didn't, didn't really talk about, but also kind of breezed over, um, was you can see that Diana is working from right to left on this one. So she sees what part of the pantograph is on its way. If you're working from left to right, yeah, um, the pantograph would be underneath the machine, so you don't really know what's ahead or what direction you're looking. When you're working from right to left, you can see that whole design um, throughout the piece of the quilt. Oh, this looks good. So on your vacation, you can start quilting quilts. <laughs> I get vacation? Well, no, I was just being optimistic. But oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to finish this off so I can show them kind of what I mean. Doing a great job. And then I want to show them um, how to roll it because that's kind of what's really important. It's like, how do I advance now? Yeah. So I want to show them how to advance and then. Looks good. I want to do the next row. All righty. Sounds good. And the first end, I'm going to stitch up this way because technically I would be off the quilt if I measured right. There you go. Oh, looks good. Yeah. So there we go. So if we're back at the front, we can actually see kind of my little starfish. But, you know, the idea is that this is going to be on a quilt that's not solid fabric. So you're not going to realize that that's a starfish and with gold thread. But I want to it give them cute. idea. I like it. But what's important now is really is I want to show you how to roll. So yeah. let me go ahead and we'll, Corey's going to pull up the thread real quick. And okay. then I'm going to move to show the show what I'm doing. Well, I guess I didn't have to do that one. <laughs> yeah, okay. No problemo. All righty. So I'm going to, Corey's going to pop off the. Sorry. Here, okay. Ugh, there we go. All right, let's pop off our, our, our side grips which are really nice. Uh -huh. You definitely keep it straight. I like these side grips. Um, and then I'm going to rotate mine up. Now this is what's kind of important is I want them to see over here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me Before get I... you. Let me get you going here real quick. And um, at the, if you look at the front of the machine, well look first look at the back and it says top of pattern. Now my laser light is right here on this little red dot and mm -hmm. I'm going to position it down. So if I have it on the right position, B should pull me down. Yep. And it did. So then it's going to stay in place for me. So then after you've got it in place, then we're going to go and unlock the machine. The goal is that I'm going to bring this down here and it says top of next row. Now what's really nice about our patterns is we have this on all our patterns. Now, if you got one years and years and years ago, it might not have it. But our, now that we reposition them, they do. Right. Or reprint them. So it says top of pattern, top of next row. Corey, you want to go ahead and rotate it for me? Right. So just to reiterate again, you've got the needle down in the fabric. Needle down in the fabric on top okay. of pattern. And I'm going to loosen my backing. Mm -hmm. Take that off. And I'm just going to slowly, because needle's down in fabric. So you want to slowly move this up. Yeah, we're not racing it. So now slow down. 
Go ahead. When you get to the top right here, you're going to go two clicks past. One, two. Okay. And then put your clicker back on, your backing. Mm -hmm. Now two clicks forward, and that pretty much lines you right back up. Yep, right there. Look at that. Perfect. Right on it. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we're going to double check the front to make sure that it actually did okay. Okay. So I'm going to pull my needle back up. And how I can tell is I'm going to go back over to where my the bottom of my star is right on the back of the paper here. And I'm going to do the same thing I just did when okay. I was stitching before. Okay. Is I'm going to go check right here. So, Corey, you can check if you want. Uh-huh. I'm going to look To see if you. I, I'm not going to hit a stitch if I start stitching. So if I oh, I see. You're kind of just giving a little bit of a mm -hmm. check there. I, I see. just want to check to make sure I'm not going to stitch over. Okay. So, once you get good at this, you won't need to do all these checks, but these are just good things to check when you first start. Right. Good okay? habits to get into. All right. You said that you wanted to kind of do this next row. I did. So, let me base down the sides real quick. I'm going to do a little bit of a closer base here on the side to give them that idea. Yep. Let me base that real quick. I'm going to go into my nice little basting feature. Okay. While you're basting, I'm going to double see if we have any questions. Okay. So basting right down here on the side, about an eighth of an inch, maybe a sixteenth of an inch away from the side of that fabric. Basting at a quarter inch um, basting stitch here, you could do tighter um, or a little bit loose. I wouldn't go too much further out than a quarter of an inch, um, but completely up to you. So I'll pull up my thread there. No need to tie that off, just something to hold those sides on. Do that on one side, and then I would do the same thing on the other side. So let me run over there and do that real quick. If you guys have any questions, please definitely put them in the comments. Pull that up. We wanted to show how you do top of pattern to top of next row, just show you how they interlock. Um, so we're just going to do one more section here, and then you'll see how it all goes together. Mm. And like I was saying, what's really nice about our patterns are these red dots. So even if it's like an offset pattern or um, a pattern, uh, um, an inset pattern, there'll be dots there to show you what to do. Right, yeah, I kind of tell you where to move the pattern to or where to roll to or anything like that really mm -hmm. helps. All right, so I've got those all clipped away. Let me put on my clamp on my side real quick. Just to keep it nice and taut. Always good to have your clamps on your backing. Keep it nice and pulled out so you don't have any wrinkles on the back because we've all had that happen. Or you get to done with the quilt and you roll it up and you see there's a little pucker on the back. Ugh. Yeah, I've done that. I don't like that. No fun. No fun at all. All right. All right, now so now that turn. everything's lined up, we've already checked it. We know we're in a good place. Okay. Corey's going to start. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay. So don't mess my row up, man. I'm not going to mess your <laughs> row up. <laughs> I'm just choking with you. All right. All right, pull up my threads. singles and here we go or, uh, ha, ha. see what I did there I know what I did I'm still in basting mode oh. <laughs> it's not gonna do me very much good make sure you check your modes yeah, make sure you're still out of basting there we go oh it's been a while since I've done a pantograph pattern let's see how this is gonna look But really, when you get when you get the move and groove of this down, you be cranking edge to edge quilts out super fast. Sometimes you have to make your own sound effects. Oh, it's yeah? more fun that way. Or put some um, music on. Yeah. Put those AirPods on and dance around. And bounce around. Well, don't bounce around while you're stitching. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at you. Boy, I might be rocking and rolling a little bit faster than I did.
Woohoo! This is fun. We had a question on how do you check the bobbin thread, and I think he meant like the back when it's quilting. Um, so basically, we just check right before we uh, start, just mm -hmm. to check our tension, and then we get usually are good to go. We don't normally have to stop and check every time. Mm -mm. Just make sure your bobbin case tension is good. If you have a toe attention gauge for your bobbin, that helps a lot. Yeah, once you know that's good and your tension's good, you do a quick ch uh, tension check with a quilt sandwich, you're usually good to go. Yeah, it well, normally does it. Yep. Ooh. I'm getting too excited. <laughs> All right, so I'm here to my side, so drop down. Over, around, over, up, down, over, 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 and stop. Ha! Huh, not too bad. No, let's move it out of the way and we can show everybody. Move it out of the way. She don't like my stuff. Yeah. No, she said, move it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Kick the there machine out of the way and then I'm going to loosen this and just show how it, well it intersected. So if you just use those quick, easy tips that we just showed you and the dots on the patterns, it really does make this easy. Yeah, really easy. They interlock really well. Um, you can get a really nice look of it. Let's roll this one up. Do? I need oh, this oh, that's one. what I was yeah. doing. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought you were rolling it the opposite <laughs> no. way. I was like, that's not going to help us. No. There we go. There we go. That way they can see the project. Cute. What are you laughing at? been a minute since I've done a pantograph pattern. Well, I mean, it looks really good. You can't tell that we have two rows going the way mm -hmm. that it all filtered in together. Nice so that's point. what you want, right? Exactly. All right, so those quick, easy tips. All right, let's, um, do you have any qu more questions here in the back or something else? You uh, want to I don't have a question, but I do have something to bring up, um, up on the quilt real quick since we're up there. I'm going to do it from the back of the machine so you have a good visual. Um, so, so and while he's doing that, um, we are actually on a hand-guided machine right now. Mm -hmm. We had a question about belts. So mm. if you were on a computerized machine, you would definitely take your belts off to do this. Oh, for sure. But definitely. this one's hand-guided. Right, go ahead. Okay. Um, so if you are working with a pantograph pattern that is a directional pattern. Oh, good point. So this pattern, as you can see, is hummingbirds, butterflies. Uh, the flowers aren't really directional. But what I mean by directional is you can tell whether or not... Uh-oh. Are we not there? Oh, it's just the... Is it too bright? Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. We can, um, well, you get the idea. Well, let me show this, just the idea. Directional oh, that's pattern. Better. That's good. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So a directional pattern. In this pattern, these animals are right side up. So if you're working with that, you have to keep that in mind. So what I like to do if I'm working with a directional pattern, normally I'm having this quilt top loaded right side up as well. So the top of the quilt's up here at the top of the bars. And I would lay my directional pattern just like this on the quilt. I'd pick it up, bring it right back here to my pattern shield. Let me move the machine out of the way so we can see. Thank you. Move it way over here to the right. Okay. So we were up here, directional. Pick it up, move it right back here to my pattern shield, and lie it down. And that's the direction that's going to stay. Now I can shuffle it all day long, but that's the direction that's going to stay. If you're doing a directional pattern, when you're looking at it back here, it will want you'll want it to be upside down, so then it appears right side up on the quilt. Yep, because you're mirror imaging what you're doing up there. Yeah. Right. Kind of. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> um, but the biggest thing is lay it on the quilt the way you want to see it. Pick it up bring it right back and that's the way that it needs to be underneath your pattern shield. Mm -hmm. That way it'll be the right direction on the quilt top. Ask me how I know. Yep, there that we go. That took me out of pantograph patterns real quick when I first started. <laughs> <laughs> Fun stuff. All righty, let's go back up to the front. We'll see if we have any other questions. Um, we were using the Gamel Vision 2.0. It does have a stitch regulator on there, so that's gonna be kind of the encoders or kind of the sensors that help the stitch regulator move and stop what it wants to. Right. We had a question on that. Right, yes. So let's see if there's any other questions and then I think we're good. I think that's all good, yeah. Yay. Awesome.
Well, if you think of any questions or you're not watching this live and you have a question, please put it into the comments and we'll get that answered for you. For sure. We just wanted to show you quickly how easy it is mm -hmm. if you haven't tried the pile of panographs that you have or if you've never gotten a panograph, definitely get one. Um, throw it on the back and super easy that you can just not even think about it. I have a question. Oh, yeah, we cousin have a question. has a question. I actually got this question on my phone the other day. Like, okay. How long are your panographs? Oh, this is a good question. Yes. So how long or how wide? are the panographs and would you like to answer that question yeah so the panographs are actually our panographs that we sell here at linda's i can't everyone's a little other, different yeah. yeah for other companies um but they range anywhere from 98 inches to 100 121 inches 95 percent of them are going to be 121 inches long some of them are 36 inches packet well those patterns. are packets packet patterns are 36 packet patterns, inches yes. yes so the panographs that are on the rolls those are going to be between 98 and 121 but like i said 95 percent of them are 121 inches um normally the ones that are a little bit shorter and they'll tell you in the descriptions we have those in the oh. descriptions yeah in the descriptions um, will tell you what but also the is. packet patterns like he was saying because we do have packet patterns for people that want to try blocks triangles you know some borders corners those are normally about 36 inches long in there just because they're letting you test a lot of those different things out um I, you brought Tip. up another good point. Let's okay. bring up one thing real quick. Yeah. Um, if you get the combo version of patterns, it comes with different sizes mm -hmm. on it. Um, but you talked about earlier if you have like a nine inch throat or where yeah. you want to stand. So if yeah. you're working on your domestic machine that you've kind of converted to a mid arm, mm -hmm. we have a um, series called the 700 series. Right. And these are rolls. And there's five. Di Can you hold that side for me, yeah. please? There's five different five inch designs on this. You're getting a lot of bang for your buck and you could do that on your mid arm and get some really cool patterns out of it. Yeah, we um, have. So there's a couple of different in the 700 series. Yeah, this we've got about 20. I yeah, think. I think we got about 20 different ones with different combinations. Yeah. And you can also use this for borders, even if you had a bigger machine. Mm -hmm. You could do it for borders, for so sashings, we, all sorts of stuff like that. So we that. have this series and then our 800 series. Our seven just, inches. Our seven inches. And mm -hmm. then from there, it's just kind of. They all range around. All range around. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. So I definitely. Totally off topic, but I, just I know. That well, in. no, it's kind of good to know. <laughs> so people definitely want to give those a shot and give them a try if they never have. I mean, obviously, if you have a cute computerized machine, it'll do this for you. But for the ones of us that don't, this is the way to make a pattern. Put on those ear pods. Just go. Just keep going and not feel like you have Should to, like, focus. Band, but it's not going to work. <laughs> so I'm just going to leave that there. All right. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Well, I think that we did pretty good. Do you think you, we have any other questions? Uh, I think I'm good. I don't see anything. Cousin's good. All right. We're good. All righty. Well, we want to appreciate. Oh, so appreciate. We want to thank you for watching. Okay, let me just, <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. I don't mean to shove her to the side, but y'all are our family, so let's let's be real. Um, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Mom and I have not been in the best headspace today. Um, we didn't get the best news right before we went live today, um, so please forgive us if we were tripping up on some words or a few things, um, but we did get some troubling news in our family. Um, so just please have your prayers with us and our family um, through these times, please. Um, and like I said, I just want to please forgive us for us tripping over our words um, throughout this episode today. But we had um, a great time with you. Yeah, we did. I know you had a great time. I did. Um, bringing back some of those cool um, panograph days that we had and uh, pulling them through, giving you some of those tips and tricks to work down the sides, kind of use that tape, your pen, laser light settings, that's the big thing. Um, or the shuffling side of things as well. You good? Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will see you next time here at After Hours. Bye.